Welcome. This is Google Summer of Code, uh, Jenkins Git Cache Maintenance. It is the 28th of June, 2022. Rushikesh, are there any particular topics you'd like to discuss? Yeah, uh, yeah, Ma. Uh, can you share the screen so that I can, you know, tell you what progress I've made this entire week? Yes, absolutely. Here we go. So let's look at this one. Let me bring up. Would it be best if I bring up the um, GitHub repository? Yeah. Okay. And let's look at the open pull request. And here it is. Okay. So uh, this week I added that, uh, you know, uh, getting all the caches from the, you know, on the Jenkins controller, that logic has been added. And I am able to run the maintenance tasks on all the caches. Okay, uh, th that's what has been. Uh, that's what I've done. And then yesterday I worked on. You know, we have discussed about form validation, like you know, where we can store incorrect data also into the file and then uh, va validate them whenever we are executing the maintenance task. So that's what I have worked in this, like in this part in the past one week. Excellent. Thank you. That's wonderful. So, so let's, sh are you okay if we take a look at it? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. All right. So this one looks like, oh, okay. So you're intentionally maintaining the ordering by using a linked hash map. And the, the idea there is you want to execute with a particular order? No, no. The thing is in the UI, right? The uh, if I don't use a linked hash map, whenever I refresh the page, all the order of the maintenance task is getting shuffled because uh -huh. I don't have a particular order when I'm iterating to, uh, through the hash map. So, I see. Okay, so this this assures that, that that makes sense. Good. All right. And then, oh, you silly scroll bar. Here we go. Cron syntax validation. This is for the form validation, which uh, which we have discussed, you know, not to like, which allows saving of incorrect data, but it verifies when I'm running, executing the maintenance task. So that that's the logic for this commit in this commit. Okay. Very good. Okay. Now we will, oh, and this is, I assume, just a diagnostic thing to help you as your, yeah, but is. you may, you may in fact want to use a system or a logging system because then you can read it and the user, if they ever have a question, could increase the logging level and see it telling us or decrease the logging level to say, oh, it's not happening. Oh, I had a doubt regarding logging, so that's why I haven't uh, proceeded with that. Like, how, how would I implement it? Each class would have a logger, or how, like, how would I? It, it would. Each class would have a logger, and then you use that class's logger that allows the administrator to do very fine grained control of which things they want to log to see proof that something's happening. So, this one might be a um, an info level or a let's see i have to i have to look up the logger levels uh war, yeah so this one could be a debug level even where you say hey only show this when we're doing debugging debugging level logging okay but but this the technique you're using with small commits looks very very good that's that's exactly the right way to do it. So and and you've added tests, excellent. Yeah, uh, the daily hourly that's also working. I don't know why All it wasn't right. working then. So yes, congratulations. Very yeah. okay. So so now tell me what you what you learned. How did you? What did you have to do in order to allow it to support the the rather Jenkins specific yeah. way of describing it? Uh, Actually, I didn't do anything. I, I tried it once again and it started working. I don't know why it didn't work that day. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So it's, it should be easy to test. Good. Very good. Yeah. 
Interesting. Okay, now this one. Okay, this test, I'm not sure is doing what you expect it to do. Yeah, it's throwing an error. So that, that, that's what I wanted it to do. It is, but the problem is you're iterating over a loop and the first call on the loop will throw the exception and test none of the others. Oh, it won't. Oh, okay. Right. So, so I, I, I thought it would. So well, and, and you could you could, for instance, you could do this if you were instead to switch and use a parameterized test. Okay. Then you could make these invalid, invalid syntax items each parameters. And then you do the same syntax. You say, I expect to throw antler exception. And all you do then is in the test, you call task scheduler dot get crontab list. And it will it will then use that. So so that's this one won't have the behavior you want right now, but it's pretty easy. You just split it out into a separate file, uh, task scheduler parameterized test, and then make the parameters your incorrect syntax. That has the nicety that then it's it's easy to see what the test is asserting because all it's asserting is that this exact statement will throw an exception. Okay, I, I, I'll do that, I'll do that. I didn't know it would only test the first one, so. Well, and, and good for you, good for you for writing tests. Well done, Prushikesh, this is really great. All right, so in that, and this one, I assume is just an evolution of the earlier but file we were looking at. Yeah, I, I deleted all of that in the previous one and added it to the... Great. So did you want to, do you want me to take this for a test drive and show show that it's it's working? Should we use that for, or are there more things you would like to show tonight, today, before before we finish our session? Uh, so actually, there are two ways of uh, like uh, how I want the session to be. I, uh, first thing is I never like the maintenance tasks are running, okay, but I never ran it properly. Like I never run ran all the maintenance tasks. Like I like you know setting it like for one hour and then setting setting it for like two hours. Uh, running every two hours. So that's something which I haven't done. But the maintenance tasks are running. It's getting a lock. It's, a, it's a using that lock running uh, running the maintenance task on that cache and then getting unlocked. So that logic has been written, but I haven't tested it completely. Okay. okay. And the other thing which I wanted uh, in this session was where uh, like uh, regarding legacy Git maintenance, okay, for versions less than 2.30, okay. Where do I write the logic for it? Do I write it in the Git plugin or the Git client plugin? Because if I wanted it to, if I want to write it in the Git plugin, right? Uh, I am not getting the Git version. I'm not able to use the Git version, underlying Git version, or uh, CLI version. So that 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 that's something I was not able to like, proceed. Good. Okay, that's a very good point. So I think what you're noting is get is it get client version? I forget even the name of the function. Uh, no, but there's some version thing in it. Let's look for the word version. Private in the Git client plugin. Here we go. This is at least version, right? That's the that's the one thing that knows about version numbers. I thought there was something in in command or in the in the Git plugin as well. Okay, let's. You okay if I do some quick exploring? Yeah, sure, sure. sure. All right, so. Okay, that's not a whole lot of help. Change log, version ID, config version. GitLab version. Get version, no, that's still GitLab specific. Unexpected Git major version. 
oh, okay, so this thing is doing some work with the Git version, but it's entirely inside a test. Okay, okay so, so the, the Git plugin has logic in it, but it's right now it's completely inside of a test to determine which version of Git and Maybe we ought to look at that and see sample repo. Yeah, there's again another test usage. Check out with that. Okay. Okay, let's do one more. Source slash main. Oh, yes, let's use correct syntax. Okay, so oops. okay, config version is no help. Temp version all inside the GitLab browser is looking at GitLab version. Help files. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't have any way of getting the okay so the the choices are are well do you have a preference because you could for instance just create a new api somewhere in the git plugin that you can use to determine what version of command line git you is available you could oh. put it inside the caching mechanism you could put it most anywhere you'd like, because there's an example right here of how to do it. All right, oh. so here is here is code that knows how to do that. Okay, and, and what exactly is run here? Is it like something? I assume it's a convenience method inside this, inside this, or inside in another inside the parent yeah so it's it's a convenience method that knows how to do um, a fork or a fork and exec let's see let's look at it and see so abstract sample dbcs repo um, this is where i really need a tags file Okay, so it is coming from another place. So Jenkins Java doc. See if we can find it. SCM API plugin. Okay. That doesn't help me at all, but let's look at Jenkins GitHub SCM API. Sorry, I'm staring at another screen. I'll be right there in just a moment. SCM API plugin. Okay. No, oh, I think here we go. Okay, so what does run do here? There it is. Now find the real run. The real run is abstract sample repo. So in case you can't tell, we have to look at this one. Now here, there will be a run. Yeah, so it creates a launcher and then makes the call and and this you certainly could do uh, inline inside the git plugin it's quite allowed because in your case you i think we we are confident that we don't that we always want to use command line git to perform the maintenance operations yeah yeah because I, I i sent you the link of a forum yesterday right where i asked about jkit 
and uh, they were like they don't have maintenance tasks ready in their thing so yeah right yeah and and i i agree with i don't think we even if they did have it it would probably only be in the jget 6 family and we're not ready to adopt that yet so okay. so for me it's this is too early for us to be forced onto jget 6 so even if they had it it would probably not have arrived until jget 6 right now i think they're about to release jget 6.3 okay uh, so also can i call this method directly like wherever i need it to you know get the version of the git uh, like you know to get the git version i i think you could right so i was assuming that the play you would probably want to to isolate the knowledge of git versions and which things do maintenance mm -hmm. inside of your maintenance task the maintenance implementation which whichever one that is inside that class but if you need it in multiple places you could certainly um, either put it in a in a utilities class and use the use the utilities class statically or copy it if you need to okay i mean because it's terrible I, I because i wanted to even show the version of which kit was being used in the ui so uh, that's why I wanted it to be in the Git plugin so that I can get the version and, you know, it would be useful even in the UI. So, well, and I think, I think that's a, that's a good thing. I, if we look at this, at this code, it's doing exactly that, right? So the knowledge of this thing is it's doing logging to tell us if it couldn't parse the Git version into a major version, a minor version, and a patch version. And, and if you find this kind of thing helpful, you're certainly welcome to make this an API that's somehow available, at least package protected inside the Git plugin. I'm not sure we want to make it a publicly accessible API because I really would rather not have Git plugin consumers have any logic about what version of command line Git they're using. Okay. It's 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 bad enough that that the Git plugin and the Git client plugin have to know about command line Git versions. Let's not leak that information to our callers if we can avoid it. Okay. But if if you would like to make this this into a package protected method somewhere in the Git plugin, you have my full support. It's. I know how important it's been. I, I'm embarrassed to admit how important it's been to me to see things like here. I'll show you the one that 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 has mattered to me is when the when the command when the version of command line Git is logged into the Jenkins build log. That is actually quite precious information. Oh, here let's just do ci.jenkins.io. That'll be good enough. So for instance, let's look at this plugin here. When it performs a checkout in the log, we're going to see, uh, oh, it's even using JGit, so that doesn't help me. Okay, let's use something else like um, this one. But what it does is it reports the, the command line Git version. And by reporting the command line Git version, I'm able to diagnose quite a number of problems much more easily. So you have my full support for logging the, the version of command line Git that's being used in the, in the, in the task scheduling logging. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, this, uh, okay. So uh, what, uh, now uh, I have a doubt regarding, you know, logging. So, like, when I log it, will I be displaying it? Where where would I be displaying? Or would I be storing it in a file? Or would I be displaying it in a terminal? Uh, uh, so. Excellent question. Very good question. Are you okay if I show a demo of how logging works in Jenkins and why I think it's so great? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so so this is my, my um, Jenkins controller. And, and what I want to show you now, uh, sorry, it's running dark mode. Is dark mode okay? Yeah, it's fine. Sir. Okay. So, so 
here is my Jenkins controller, and it has some interesting jobs on it. If I go, if I want to change what's happening, or if I want to see what's happening with logging, I go to Manage Jenkins. And now, if I scroll downwards, there will be a system log thing here. So mm -hmm. the system log gives me access to to Jenkins log messages from the web page. So when I click all Jenkins logs, it shows me, oh, here it was, upgrading Jenkins. Last was 356, we're running 357. And it, it talks about, oh, hey, I loaded an attached plugin, this thing. And now it's connecting agents. So, so the logging is, is already available to me from the web UI. So you can see what's happening. Now, the, the more elegant thing here is that maybe I need something even more detailed. So I can go to log recorders and I can add a new log recorder and I'm going to call it git SCM. So I'm going to log something from git. Well, let's, let's choose a better one. Maybe we should choose. Let's look for one that will logger. Okay, so warn tempter value sample rule. Okay, these are tests. I would like something in main. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so in get tool configurator, let's see if we can find something that it might tell us logged. Now this may be too, too pest and too, uh, I need something much more verbose. Just a minute, let's do a quick search. That might be good enough. So let's just turn on the logger for Git SCM. And we're going to go, so get SCM, I'm going to say create a new log, a new, this is creating a new logger. And it says, all right, what, what would I like? And I'm going to say, I want the class that I'm logging to be this one. So I'll, now it will help me along the way. And I like that it helps me. So I'm going to say Hudson dot plugins dot uh what was it again it was hudson.plugins.git oh get get this dot get scm so here it is prompting me along the way and i would like finer logging which is as is, is dangerously close to as verbose as you can get okay. so i won't want run this for a long time because this could potentially slow things down and be rather painful but now while that's that's set to do logging, I'm going to perform some operation like I'm going to do something that requires a checkout. Maybe hosting providers, GitHub, and I'm going to build each of these jobs. And now that the build has started, we should see in their logs. Oh, except it's not. Okay, this one's running. And it's performing some operations. Good. Now let's see if anybody else is running. Okay, this one's queued. So this one has run today. Good. So now if we go back here and look at log records, this is something that it logged. It says, not adding git tag action to build nine, likewise to build 24, and it performed a checkout. So that's how I see the logs. So if I were to add new logging statements, the output will appear here. Or if I want to, maybe I want to do logging on the maintenance task, right? So let's check out 
this one. Okay, so now is there something that we where we might benefit from a log entry? Yeah, for instance, you might choose, hey, to log something at fine that reports the size of the cache entries, something like that. Hey, uh, returned this many cache entries, and you could do that here, uh, that kind of thing. And then you would see it by turning on the logging for abstract get a CM source. Okay. So does does that address your question? Yeah, yeah. One more, then I, I have a doubt, like now what do I have to consider like to log? Like what kind of the, uh, information should I log into the using the log like do i have to like uh, log all the procedure whatever is happening or like uh, i'm not sure I about that i think it's up to you um okay. I, my ex my my past experience was i seem to have made the continual mistake of never logging enough okay. I, okay. I that that may sound really terrible but but very frequently when i've when i'm when someone is reporting a problem that's out in the world and saying, hey, I'm running Jenkins in this in some environment. And of course, they never tell us all the details of their environment. They never tell us nearly enough. Um, they tell us, hey, I'm running this and I've got this problem. Well, if I could have said, hey, turn on to increase the logging level of this class, so that we can see what happens on your system, I would have been. It would have been much easier to diagnose the problem. So, so for me at least, I found that the more I do this, the more often I'll put simple little statements in that tell me how things are progressing, so that I can know it and put them at a a relatively fine grained logging level, so that they're not on by default. Yeah. So they're not costing anything. But if I needed to ask someone, hey, please turn up the logging on this thing, they've already got the code and I'm not having to deploy, have them deploy a new debug build to get it. Okay, so I can use that logging level and then fine grain based on what has to be displayed and what doesn't. Have. Right, so, so the, one of the techniques that I found for me most recently helpful was I would put the logging statements in there and then actually turn the logging on to watch for myself that the code was executing the way I expected without using a debugger to do it. And, and it turned out it, it, as it's the result for me was it's easier then for me to know, hey, that logging is useful and it's saying the right thing and the code is executing the right thing. Okay, okay that's a, that kind of helps me. Oh, uh, I have another doubt here. Like if you go to the task scheduler class, okay, there's a class task scheduler. There I have a try catch, okay. And now it uh, assume like for some reason there's an error which has been thrown, okay. Uh -huh. uh, what do I do with that error? Do I just log it or because I can't connect it with the UI because the UI is now a separate entity here. So what do I do with that? Do I just log it or? Uh, yeah, for now, sure. for, mm -hmm. for now, I think, yeah, you should just log it. Now, okay. ultimately, we may want in, in, in a later part of the project for you to give a location on the UI where we can show that to users, because there certainly are locations in Jenkins where people can see diagnostic information, right? That, that logging page is one example of diagnostics. This support core page is another that can give, give diagnostic help. So, so for now, I would just write it to the log. And then in the future, if, if things continue as at the pace you're going, we may have enough time that you'll be able to add that as a feature into the, into the, the Manage Jenkins page that you're creating. Okay. So... 
Okay, so yeah, so that that was one thing I was like, you know, not sure what to do about. Okay. Um, and and does my answer help there or do do we need to discuss yeah. further? No, no, that thing actually helps me. So yeah. No. And uh one more thing. Can you act uh, so when I am using this uh detail incremental build, okay. Uh, uh, my IDE is not uh, supporting, f f you know, one or two dependencies, like the JG dependency isn't being supported, like only the ID, but when I am building the project is running, okay, the build is successful, but the ID throws a lot of errors, like I'm using IntelliJ right now, it says JGIT, uh, uh, you know, dependency not found, and then all oh. kind of red files and red lines everywhere, it doesn't let me run the test, okay. So that, you, what... you may want to, so there, if you're willing, post, post that as a question to the Jenkins developer list, because there are many, many people who are using IntelliJ okay. and, and they should, they'll probably be able to give you much better guidance than I could. I'm not an IntelliJ user. And because I'm not an IntelliJ user and, and I don't spare nearly enough time in the IDE anyway. So, so my problem is, I'm also not a full-time developer. Uh, I manage professionally. And so development is my hobby. Uh, and therefore, I'm not a good voice to tell you how to configure IntelliJ. But there are lots of people who are using IntelliJ. And they should be able to, to answer, oh, you need to do this magic step or that magic step. I thought there was some, some configuration or some compilation thing that you have to do in order to make it make it find all the things that you're seeking okay so i i, I think I'll, I'll i'll send a mail and then you know i think that could help me out because i wasn't able to test anything then i had right. to use the previous version of it and comment all these to test the uh, things and then i can uncomment it so yeah and I have a doubt uh, regard, like if, can you uh, open the file, you know, a task executor file, you know, the sure. class. You bet. So task executor. Uh -huh. yeah. So here, uh, if you can scroll uh, down. So, uh, the get, get get client method, the get get a client method here it, it takes in you know get utils dot resolve get tool so based on this uh parameter that is default i get the default uh you know uh get tool on the jenkins controller but now here i only want to get you know a cli get okay so what is the parameter i need to pass here only to get a get cli like cli command Get command. Yeah, it's a good question. I'm not sure if there if there is a way from here to to say please give me command line git because because this thing, good observation on your part, this thing says ask the Jenkins controller for its default git implementation. And the default git implementation could be configured to be JGit. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have we have ci.jenkins.io, for instance, that I believe is configured exactly that way, where it's intentionally using jgit rather than command line git. So, so let's see what we, okay, so how would we, well, let's see. Maybe there's somebody already doing this. Okay, so we're at least doing instance of checks and we're doing casts. So there are some things that know how to, yeah, okay, oh, oh, look. <laughs> so maybe this is already the thing that you need without having to put a version checking method inside command line git or inside the git plugin. 
look at this thing right here, line one here. Let's just do it like this, line 115. So what it does, because CLI get API implementation is a, <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. Because CLI get API implementation is a public class, it can be used and that's what it's doing here. So it's taking, in this case, it's trusting that the Git client can be cast in this case, safely to a CLI Git API implementation. And I assume there must be something else elsewhere here that guarantees that that, that works. I have no idea. I haven't looked at the code recently to see how it does that, but, but this thing is being converted to a command line Git implementation. Now, is that is that a valid cast? Now I've got to see. Yeah, the Git client, no, the CLI API, uh, the implementation, you know, that implements this interface, okay, in the Git client plugin that ah. I have seen. Okay. So, okay. All right. Yeah. So then this, so this would at least, if you, if you can, if the logic you need to express in your version check can be expressed as a, is it at least this version, then you, you could probably use this technique so long as you can, you can be assured and, and you could certainly do a, a, right, you could do a, let's put it in here. I, if, I actually didn't understand this technique. So really. If git instance of, something like this, where you say, hey, I'm going to check that get client or is implementing whatever the whatever the, the construct is linguistically check to see is it the right type is the cast safe and if it is then this thing just casts it and and decides yes that's okay whoops what have i broken here apparently i have lost the ability to write decent code Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, he, but in my thing, I will, I would uh, like, I am constructing the get client, uh, you know, uh, the get client here, whatever uh, the type. Okay. So can I directly, uh, you know, convert it to a CLI get API? If, if it is of if it is an instance of CLI get API input, yes. Okay. Okay. So, so I would be taking the default only then. So, uh, oh, you know. Well, and, and that's where we've got to find the answer to your question, right? How do we, how do we ask for, or, or maybe, maybe it's different. Maybe. Well, let's see. Yeah. I mean, if, if, they, yeah, wait a sec, wait a sec. Isn't, don't we, I think we have the answer here. If the controller is configured to have jgit as its default implementation and has no other implementation of git we can't run maintenance right yeah, because we we yes. we're blocked so so i would think what that means is you want to ask for default and if default is not an instance of cli git then we can't run maintenance Okay, but then uh, on uh, if an administrator you know wants to set jgit as his default, but you know and still has CLI git on his machine, then what then... we would need to do is, if it's possible, is it possible to iterate over the uh, the implementations? I don't remember. I thought there was a facility that would allow iteration over the. The Git implementations. Let's see. That was Git tool, wasn't it? Oh, well, that was Git tool. Task Git executor. Tool. This one. Okay. Yeah. So if we take a quick look at Git utils, and is Git utils in this class? Okay. Now I really need my. Just a minute.
get ls files. Okay. Now I have my index ready. So this one, okay, so get utils. So here is a constructor resolved by name. And we would need to ask on the built-in agent. I use the next next method, like the two similar method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think I think in your case, don't you really want to check for it on the built-in? Because if you're node agnostic, that may not be available on the controller, right? Oh. Wait, what exactly is node agnostic here? So what, what node agnostic is trying to say is list, list me a Git tool that's available uh, when I don't know which node I'll be on. But you okay. know which node you'll be on because you want to execute on. So here it says when you know the node you're going to be on, and you do because you want to be running on built-in. You want to be running on the central controller nowhere else yeah and so in that case it's saying hey you want to use this thing and as the node value you want to get the default the built-in node and there's a there's a method on the jenkins object that will tell you give you a, a node for the built-in node mm -hmm. now i don't know if that helped but but I think the question we were trying to ask is, is there a way to get the list of all tools? And tools. I, do, I don't know of a way. Because I've seen in the UI, you can set various kinds of, you know, get versions also, the CLI get versions, like a 2.3 version, a 2.1 version, a two, uh, you know, 1.8 version. So now which version do I use internally to run right. the maintenance? Right, exactly. Well, so, so, and, and wouldn't just looking at this code, wouldn't you want to pass in the Git tool as null so that you always call git tool dot get default installation? Rather than using the word default, rather than using the string default, like, like you did, why not just allow this method that you're calling, if we call it with null, interesting, yeah, and this does the same thing. So if you call it with git tool equals null, then you're going to it will call its own get the default installation without you having to know the string that describes what is the default installation. So in this case, uh, if, if uh, any administrator uses a default implementation as JGit, he can't. They can't run maintenance tasks, right? That uh, that's what. Let's yeah that. I think I would take that as a safe assumption for now because we we really cannot do maintenance with JGit. And if they're going to choose to use JGit as their default implementation, and we we the Git plugin documentation tells them that the canonical, the the reference implementation for the Git plugin is command line Git. JGit it has known limitations. They are welcome to use it, but it has known limitations. If they use it, they choose to accept those limitations compared to command line Git. Okay. So, okay. So yeah. Okay. That that thing answers my question. Then so I'll I'll, I'll be using the default uh, implement. You know the default Git tool which is used in Jenkins, and based on that, I can schedule the maintenance tasks or throw a log error saying you know update your so tool right you're you're not i cannot 
the message the message really is i cannot run um, maintenance with jacob and and realistically we can't i don't i think even though jacob implements garbage collection i'm not ready to take the risk of relying on their garbage collection implementation given that they haven't done the rest of the maintenance tasks i'd much rather we just use command line git for all of it so in the get uh, CLI, uh, the get client tool, sorry, in the get client plugin, wherever there's a, you know, I implement the methods maintenance, okay. Do I like just return null or do I just log something there and leave it like in the get client? I would, yes, I think okay. that makes sense. Just if someone, if someone attempts to perform a maintenance operation using JGit, just say unsupported and and I would do it by logging rather than I think it's better to do it by logging than by than by throwing an exception but if you look in the git client plugin you'll see both both techniques used there are times when a a request to do something is silently ignored and there are other times where a request to do something that jgit can't do throws an immediate exception and I think users have been better satisfied by the silence than they have by by throwing the exception. Okay. Let's see. I think if we look here, we can see some examples. Okay, so no. Oh, well, yeah, these these give us some hints. No, they're only tests. Okay. Let's do that, maybe. There we go. Yeah, here's an example. Hmm. If you attempt to do a sparse checkout with JGit, it will tell you, sorry, JGit doesn't, the JGit implementation in Jenkins does not support sparse checkout. Or here's a, a, I think a more friendly way to do it. So this one throws an exception. And that's, that's not very friendly to the user, but it makes sure they know you ask for something that can't be done. This one is, I think, more friendly to the user. It says you ask for large file support but our JGit implementation does not support large file support. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that, that, that answers my question. Uh, and I have another doubt. How is, is a task listener similar to a logger or how, how is it different from it is. a logger? Yeah, it is, so it's, it is same? Okay. no, it has, it has some very important differences. Task listeners, are intended for things that might fail and they are it is a way to log at something lower than the system level uh, for a thing that might fail like a build so in the case of in the case of the git client most of the references to a listener are being written directly to the build log so this message warning jgit doesn't support lfs checkout is written to the build log of the job job that attempted to use it. Okay, now now I'm kind of confused. Should I use the logger or do I have to use a task listener? Or because... if if a task listener is available, you're welcome to use a task listener. But the maintenance tasks probably won't have a task listener, will there? Because they're they because there really isn't. I didn't think anyway that you had implemented anything that would let it have the concept of a oh, of a yeah. task a set of tasks that you're running as separate things right i thought you would just run it and log it and therefore for that you need to use the system logger yes okay so i, I yeah there's nothing like i am not getting anything like a task listener from any class which i am using so uh, i have nothing like uh, i don't have a task listener but however i have to pass a task listener to the get you know cli you know cli command line get so i for now i you know pass a empty task or null task listener so oh oh and and that's one where you may want to 
rather than pass an empty task listener, you might want to pass a task listener that would allow you to take the results and send them to a logger, um, a system level logger. Oh, okay. Can you repeat that once again? So, so you've got a task listener. You so the the Git client takes task listeners, right? And it will yeah. log to that task listener. And you might want to pass in a task listener that will let you optionally write the results to the system log so that you can see it because you don't really have a concept of a task yet, at least. And, and so, but writing the information that the Git client would be logging to the system log may be helpful. Okay. So basically it would be similar to the log which we were using above, right? Like the normal log. It, it, that, that was the idea, at least that I had. You, you probably want to check it to be sure, hey, does it behave that way? But I think that it's worth trying that because having this kind of message appear in your system log for a maintenance task could be very helpful. It could be quite, quite a good diagnostic to have to say, oops, there was a problem here. Somehow or other, JGIT was, an attempt was made to call JGIT during, during a maintenance task. And then, then the question is why? Okay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I I understand the flow right now. So, okay. So I think I'll I'll create a task listener which you know again logs it back. You know, uses a system logger only so that we can log it. So, Very good. Oh, uh, and then there's another. Okay, these were the major questions for this week. One more thing I had a doubt. Now, if I build a project, right, it's running all the test cases successfully on my computer, but on the, uh, you know, on GitHub, the tests are failing. There's one test which is failing in particular. Oh, so, okay. Well, so let's take a look. So this is Git plugin. Let me bring it over here and let's take a look at the pull request. So it should be the most recent pull request now, right? Which is, well, I don't remember. It's pull request number. Just to, let's look. So is it 1282? There it is, friendly local data. Nope, that's not it. Okay, so it must be the other one. 1277. Yes, okay, good. So this one you say is failing tests. Now the question is why? Test get caches, get SCM maintenance test line 63. Hmm. So this is saying it didn't find the caches. That's really strange because you did create them, right? I mean, that's what yeah. this is doing. And on my local uh, computer, it's running. So it's, it's running the test successfully. Well, so is it failing on a particular Java version? No, it's failing on all, all the... Ah, it is. Okay, so, so it fails on all three configurations. No, it's only failing on, on Linux or on Java 11 and Java 8, but not failing on Java 17. Huh. Let's let's do a quick double check. Just a moment. I'd like to see this in Blue Ocean, because I have a 
a thought that it may be. No, that's odd. Okay, so it passed on Java 17, mm -hmm. but the test failed. Oh, oh, I wonder, are these run, were these running concurrently on the same agent? Because it could be that one, one of the tests was running in parallel to another and they trampled on each other's temporary files. Okay, so this 17 was running on Ubuntu 20, Windows 8. Where's Linux? There was the other one. So Ubuntu 20, 8C1640. Hmm. I don't have an explanation for that failure either. You okay if we try to run it from my environment? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so. Where is the test failure? Test, latest test result. Okay, so it, the thing we want to run is that thing. So it's been forever since I've seen a green check, okay, where all the tests have been passed, so. Yeah, that, well, and that's not a good thing, right? That's a terrible thing. So get diff. All right, so Okay, no failure there. Why else would that test fail? And it can't be a concurrent thing because it's failing on Windows and we only ever run once on Windows. So there must be something else going on. So you may just have to put some debugging statements, some printing, some output statements to see what the condition is around the system when that fails because that, that surprises me. Yeah, the thing is the test doesn't failing on my computer, so I, I don't even know like what would be the error. Right, which which means that means you've really got to put debugging print statements and let it run on CI to see if you can identify what's different between your environment and ci.jenkins.io because you're right, it should fail on your computer as well. I mean, if there's a if there's a real failure, it shouldn't be somehow tied to ci.jenkins.io. And it, it's certainly passing for me on all three all three Java versions. Now maybe there's something about. Is it regarding the file path or something something like that, which is different could, on Windows? Could be, although I don't see any. Oh oh look. I wonder, no, because it's saying it's using master, so it's okay. It's not invoking the other problem. Although it's possible 
that this message here, I assume this message is probably not happening on your computer, is it? I, I don't remember it. Because it, it's certainly not happening on mine. This is a message you get with the latest release of Git. And on Windows, we're we're using command line Git 2.36, so very a very recent version. On mm -hmm. Linux, the Linux version is much older, but it's also failing. So when it fails, what's the message on Linux? It's got the same message because it's using a new, yes, it's using a nice new command line Git version on Linux as well. Interesting. And the 17 one, the Java 17? Uh, oh, good question. Very good. Wait, it's also using a new one. Wait, wait. This is 11, I guess. Oh, whoops. Oh. How did I get that? Let's try this again. 11, 8, okay, 17, passing. It's using the same version and giving the same message. Hmm. So I think you may just have to add some diagnostic print statements to, to debug by telegram in this case, to debug remotely. Okay, so I have to add all, print, all uh, the print statements and push my- Yeah, or- right? or logging statements, system logger statements that should, if I remember right, appear in this. Yeah, so in this case, these things, I think if you use the logger, they will appear, but you can check for yourself when you're running it. Okay. Uh, and I have another few more questions. Okay. Yes. So, so uh, can you open the, you know, task executor test, I guess, task executor test. Okay, this one? Oh, uh, yeah. Oops. Okay. Oh, uh, here uh, I wanted to use, uh, um, wait, can you scroll a bit? Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's also one. Let's execute internet, that's one. Okay, uh, not the task executor. Uh, it was, uh, sorry, get uh, maintenance SCM, I guess. I named it like that. Not mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, in this one, so the I added the, yeah, in this only the test is failing. Okay, I added the logic to run this. Okay, then uh, I go down. Okay, uh, if you go to the next test, okay. Uh, I want, yeah, I commented this because it, it's throwing errors. Uh, it's like the tests are failing. So here I wanted to test whether there are no caches present on the Jenkins controller. And you know, verify whether this thing get returns no caches. But in the previous method, uh, the previous test already caches were being made, okay, like created. So now in this, uh, whenever I try to run this, it throws an error because already there are caches run present on the, no. Uh -huh. yeah so, so couldn't you if if you would like to test like that couldn't you do something like this where put that there and then uh do an at before public void uh erase or destroy caches And then in this method, destroy all the caches. So what this would do is say every every test now has to reconstruct its caches. Oh, okay. So before every method runs, I think this method would be running, right? That's correct, right. That's what a before does is it says, I want this test, I want this public method to be invoked prior to each test that's run in this in this file. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll look into this, I'll add this thing so that, you know, these tests also start, uh, you, know, get, uh, you know, are uh, finished. Uh, so now I have the, you know, uh, so now this week I'll have to be working on legacy get maintenance. Okay, but for that I would be needing the versions of, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and which version... I even sent a mail to the, you know, office, to the Git, uh, in the Git uh, detail of uh, for forms, okay, and then they have given a response, uh, which was very complicated, okay, they were like, go to the uh, Git CLI, use some command to find in which version it has been re released and all, so I, I, I couldn't follow with that, so. So this was. That they were you were trying to determine which versions of command line get implemented portions of maintenance yes yes ah right yeah and and that if it will help you i had we had i given you access to mark pc oh no oh wait, i forgot about you know sending my public key okay so I, so I, if you want to send your public key to me i can give you access to it at least then you have then you can access a, an assortment of Git versions. It's not all Git versions, but it's an interesting assortment. Uh, and how would I be using it? Like after I give you the public key, like after uh, I send you the public key, how would I be using that? Then what you would do is you would you would do this. Let's see. I'll show uh, what you. Well, the easy way is you would do this. You'd say SSH. Um, Rushi. Okay, I'm going to fake your name by saying mine. You would do that. And, and that and logs no, me in. Uh, uh, in after, uh, uh, like after I log in, then, then you like, you know, then what do I do? Like how well, do I... so then there's an additional argument you add to the command line here, which which is the thing that creates a tunnel. And now I've got to look it up to see what the command line argument is to create a tunnel. And I'll, I would include that in my email to you. So it's SSH tunnel, oops, nope. Define a tunnel with SSH. Okay. There we go, okay. What is an SSH tunnel? How can you use it? And now configure an example. Here we go. So, okay, forward a port from the client to the server. And what we do here is minus L source port. Uh, okay, so yeah, so I think we would write it like this. Was it minus capital L? Is that what it said? Yeah, yeah, capital L. Okay, good. So minus capital L. So it'd be minus capital L, 8080 colon mark dash pc2 dot mark weight dot net colon 8080. And what this then says is on my computer, port 8080, so localhost colon 80, will actually be routed to this thing in behind Mark's firewall. Okay. And 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 then how, like how do I determine the get uh, like there are so many plugins and so many things on your machine right so Yeah so then then what you do is is on my computer you you would go here to Jenkins Jenkins home oh and I think mine's turned off right now so let's Let's do it this way. Home. Is it off? It is. I need to start it. Just a minute. Okay. So on that computer, or on that on that Jenkins installation, I have assigned labels to the agents 
that describe precisely the Git version that's installed on each agent. This UI would be coming on my uh, browser. It right? would be, right. So when you ran localhost colon 80, 80, 80 like that, you mm -hmm. would see Jenkins, just okay. like I'm seeing it here. And here we come. Come on. Okay, so here then what you would do is you go to build executor status. Okay. And mm -hmm. let's look at something that has, that shows something other than not applicable. So that this is an agent that's connected, this edamame. So when I click on that, I see labels that tell me this thing is labeled git 1.8 plus, 2.11 plus, 1.9. Oh, there it is, git 2.17. This is the one without a plus. That's the label that's assigned to this agent. And so this, this agent has git version 2.17 installed on it, okay. as do several other uh, uh, agents. Now, if I look instead at, let's look at some other computer like this one, it has git 2.35 installed on it. Okay. And then I have to create a job on this, you know, to check whether maintenance asks exists or not, right? Correct. Right. And so then what you would do is, is you create a, a job like, here, I've got one right here. Let me, maybe we should just create it for you right now. Do we, did we already do that? No, we, yeah, there it is. Get, get maintenance help. This one I think is the job we created. Let's see what it says. And it tells us, yeah, let's see. Configure, where is that? Configure. Yeah, so it's it's actually attempting to do that for me. So so maybe we've got it started already. So get get maintenance help is right here, and what it's trying to do is saying get version. GC minus minus help. So it's trying maintenance commands to see if we can get output from them. So any changes have to do it in this file, right? Or or you create a job that does these so kinds of things, that's, right? That's better, because yeah. I can I can take this exact text, right? And let's let's do that. Let's take that exact text and create a new copy of this job that's not using. So new item, get it maintenance help um, pipeline. Okay. So it's a pipeline and we're going to paste that text there and I just want to use this. Okay. Okay, so what it's going to do now, if I got it correct, is it's outputting get help. Right. This is easier than you know going through all the files then. Right. Well, it at yeah. least it gives you some sampling of hey, uh, there here are some machines that Mark has, 
and these machines that Mark has are reporting this. It also gives you a nice indicator with the red square of things that don't have the git maintenance command. Okay. So, so no, which, which, which versions do I have to target? Like which all versions are present? Do I look into all of them? I, I, I think so, because what you need to know is for, for okay, here on Edamame, this agent, it failed the job. So if we, if we configure that differently, we can make it so it doesn't fail, but it will still give us the output we need. So if we instead said something like this, All right, now that should not fail. But you'll have to read the output for each of those to decide what did it actually do. Oh, now it says it failed, even so. Now, shame on me. Okay, there's git. Let's see, click. Okay, git gc. And get hmm. Why did okay? So apparently I'm not really good at shell scripting. Hang on, Hoshikesh. Let's fix this. Configure. Okay, here we'll do it. Sorry if this is terribly painful for you to watch me diagnosing my mistake. Okay, so now we try it. Okay, that was more what I expected. Mm -hmm. How, however, when we look at the output from this top one, what you'll see is it's going to have a message. Okay, it says git gc, that worked. So gc is available. Git commit graph, it says, oh, commit graph is not a git command. So you know for this version, git 2.17.1, it doesn't have commit dash graph. Yeah, okay. So, so I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll try this out. If I am facing any problems, I will you know, send a message in the Gitter channel. All right. And finally as i think i'm taking a lot of time of yours so uh, this uh, what you tell uh, now uh, are, i've written the code for the kit maintenance how do we know like it's it's properly working and all like do we test it like uh, run it on some caches which are are present so that you know we can know whether everything is going as yes. expected so. Yes, and that's where Mark PC2 is a good choice because here are some Git caches. Okay. So I think that this week I'll add the logs, log files. Okay. So that we get that thing. Once that's ready, we can start testing, you know, everything on the system and then check whether everything is working as expected. And that sounds that sounds very good to me. I'll also try adding the you know get uh, legacy maintenance you know for versions less than two point three zero. So that would be the agenda for this week, and I think even next week. So yeah. 
Very good. And yeah, that that that's it from that. Those are the questions. Sorry for you know asking too many questions that you know at the time. I'm delighted that you're asking questions, Rishikesh. This is wonderful. Thank you for the progress you're making. Let's keep going, and and we'll check in. If you need this, this coming weekend is a holiday weekend here in the United States. It's a public holiday. And so I will, I'm less likely to be available, particularly because my grandchildren will be in town. They'll be visiting here from Texas. And so, so I, if, if you need help, reach out to Rishab and see if Rishab can assist. If okay. neither Rishab nor I are available, uh, you're welcome to ping me on Gitter and I may check occasionally. It's just I'll be playing with small children and having a lot of fun. Uh, you'll be available next week, right? Like yes, next yes, I certainly will be available next week. Oh, okay, fine. That's fine. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Rishab. Anything else? Uh, not, nothing, nothing. That's it from my side. All right. Have a great day. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you.